This time on CarCraft, we're here at SEMA Garage. We're going to be putting these two engines together to make one really bitchin' engine for our Buick Regal back in Wisconsin. What we've got is a 392 crate and a warrantied out Hellcat bottom end. We're going to swap some heads, we're going to swap some cams, we're going to put it all back together, ship it out to Wisconsin, and then go to Drag Week. So why are we taking a brand new crate engine apart to put a supercharger on? You would think that, hey, we'll just put the supercharger onto the 6.4, go drag racing. Well, this is 10.8 to one compression. That over there is 9.6. So what we're gonna do is swap the heads because the bolt pattern on that and the bolt pattern on these is correct. Over there, those Hellcat heads are set up for the Hellcat blower. It's a proprietary head. It's basically the same head, same CCs on the combustion chamber. Everything's basically the same, but we need that to bolt up to the heads. And we're gonna put those heads on the 6.2 so that we have the correct compression ratio. After that, we're gonna get right into the cam swap so that we can make some power. Well, I know we're not gonna be using a heater in the Regal, so we're gonna go ahead and remove these heater lines because they're connected to the front cover. This is a VVT solenoid. If you're able to run VVT with the factory computer, it'll definitely help your bottom end and your top end. But we're running Holly on one of them and we're running fast on the other. And we're not gonna run VVT, but we are gonna run some bigger cams. So you can disconnect them. So we're gonna have to pull the front pan bolts because they go into the front cover. But for now, we're gonna leave the pan on because this engine is gonna get a special treatment. Next time you see this, it'll be a 426 Hemi built with the, uh, the help of manly performance. Getting things off and comparing them, taking a look at the valve cover difference between a Hellcat over here and the 392 here. It's a composite, no baffling or anything, but up here we've got an added little boss with the filler and the PCV built in up here for the valve cover on the Hellcat. So something we're gonna have to keep in mind, always gotta keep positive crankcase ventilation in mind when you're building an engine, especially when we're racing. We'll address that when we get there, but kind of interesting to see the different design between the two of them. They've got these marked with blue and yellow for intake on one side, exhaust on the other. It's pretty handy. Since you've done a cam swap on these, you wanna do the cam swap. So we've got a lock for the phaser. And then what I'll do is I'll start changing the valve springs. Okay. These are torque to yield bolts, so you don't want to reuse them. They've already been stretched. You put them back in, they're not going to be accurate and consistent across all the different bolts. So we've got some brand new ARPs that are going to go in. So when they designed the Hellcat, they put in a revised cooling system from the 6.4s and the 5.7s. What they realized is that they needed to have cooling going all the way down to bottom dead center. Otherwise, it was gonna to start to get hot and you're gonna have early engine failures. So they made the coolant passages go all the way down, cooling the entire stroke of the piston. So when pulling out this cam, you gotta be careful to not score the bearings because they're not replaceable. You have to replace the complete block. We're gonna be putting in a Comp Cams HRT Stage 2 blower cam and it's gonna have a 229, 241 duration at 050 lift. 
They said it's perfect for making 850 to 1050 horsepower. You don't want to run it dry, dude. It'll score the bearings and it lose oil pressure, a lot of bad things. The last part is kind of hard, so you got to like put some levers in the back to get it to get it aligned all the way through. There we go, and it's in. So with the new camshaft, obviously we're going to need some new valve springs. They give us valve springs to match the aggressiveness of the camshaft. They tested these combos together. So I've got a Hemi-specific valve spring tool here. It bolts to the trunnion stands. All you do is you bolt it on, run this down. It'll compress this spring down a little bit so that you can remove the locks and then uh, pull it right back off and put the new ones on. We've gone through and miked all of the heights on the valves here so that we can find the lowest installed height between this whole cylinder head. And what we're gonna do is use these shims from comp cams to set up all the springs so that they have a uniform installed height. Throw the shim on behind the spring seat and that'll put us within our 200s variants that we're allowed to have. Spring in the retainer can go on. We're gonna compress these in a bit, throw the locks in, be good to go. Much easier to do this outside of the car, but you can do it in the car. Everything's all set up here. I'm just gonna torque this back down to 70 foot pounds. Timing covers off the 392. First step will be 25 foot pounds, one through 10. Then the top ones would be 15 foot pounds, back down to the 10 main head bolts. Then it's gonna be a 40, 45, and then 160 degree turn. I'll usually mark the bolts and put a line on them so that they're all facing the exact same way. So when I go to do the final torque, 160, all these marks should mark up the same way. These push rods back in. Comp gives us some new push rods to make up for the difference in the lifters compared to the stock ones. Edelbrock suggest that you reuse the factory O-rings for the intake, so you just take them off of the stock intake. You can put a little Hylomar gasket sealer to hold them in if you want. So I'm getting ready to set on the Edelbrock TVS 2650 supercharger, made by Eaton. It's a positive displacement supercharger, meaning it has the effect of adding about 2,650 cc's to your engine. So picture this as an 8.8 .8 liter Hemi. Lubing up the O-rings on the injectors, pop them in here. These are 88 pound injectors. We're gonna run E85 on this, so we had to up the injector size a little bit. Just wanna make sure they don't go in dry tear up the O-ring, get a little crack in there, and then you have a fuel leak later on. And mount up the fast, big mouth, 87 millimeter throttle body. Just like to be safe. Throw a little, little bit of sealant on these for the fuel rail racing applications and stuff. I've had it leak. You don't want that when you're on the track. Just a little trickle will ruin your day. It uses the same connectors and uh, same fuel rails as an LS3, so pretty standard stuff. Right, we've got a 2013 and newer 58X Reluctor, but we can use the 2009 to 2012 58X crank sensor, and that's the one that works with the fast setup that we're gonna be using, so. 
Had to do this before. A couple hemis that we've done just sends the right signal. So what we're gonna do here is uh, we've got a large pulley here, which is less boost. We're going fast here, so we're pulling out the party pulley right here. We're gonna change it out right now, so that way it's on there uh, to go. We also have kind of a clearance issue here on the large pulley. We're gonna solve that by adding more boost. I mean, this is a win, 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 if you ask me. We're not running a heater on this thing because it's a race car. So we're just tapping the heater holes here. We're gonna throw a plug in there so that we don't have to worry about it at all. While the engine's out of the car, or while the front cover is off, we can do a nice job of making sure these things are sealed. If anybody ever wants to run a heater in the future, tough luck. Now we have our sub harness for our XIM controller from FAST. Really interesting how the two interact with each other. The FAST XFI 2.0 has a CAN bus signal that gives all the information that the XIM module needs to control the coil packs. So this is our sub harness. We're gonna plug this in, and then we're gonna tidy everything up. Now we're gonna go find what we can, and we're gonna get this tied back, and it looks like it will work with our little units there if we can find some of the right zip ties. This is a Duralast Gold alternator that we're throwing on here. This one's remanufactured, but they do make a brand new one for just about anything that you drive. It's always a good idea to come through and make sure all your pulleys line up. You never know when you're using a mix match of aftermarket parts, even if they're from Mopar, or Ford, or Chevy, or whatever you're working on. You want to come through here and just check belt alignment. It's better to find out now than when you get about three miles away on your first test drive. Sealing up oil pans is way easier nowadays. Gasket technology has come a long way. The chemical technology has come a long way. I really like ultra black or the right stuff. I've never had the right stuff leak on me ever. But anywhere where there's a seam here, like between the front cover and the block, or back here between the back cover and the block, I really like to throw a little dab and then smooth it out. Just make sure that it's sealed up right there. Nice Felpro gasket, molded rubber. Looks like a good piece. It's got a built-in windage tray. So for this Regal, we've got to have a rear sump pan. And if you want to do that from the factory, that's got to come from a pickup. So we've got a 2500 rear sump set up here with the pickup and the pan coming from a 2014 Ram 2500 pickup truck. Uh, we're just gonna pop this in here, throw a little lube on that O-ring so you don't ruin it. Let's see how this sits on here. And that's it. We've successfully Frankenstein together a nice little 6.2 liter supercharged Hemi for our Buick Regal. We've got an SFI damper on the way. All of the serpentine setup looks like it's fitting really well. The supercharger looks great on top. We've got our fast XFI ready to go in. It's all wired back in Wisconsin at Cool Hand Customs. So we're gonna take this thing, crate it up today, ship it back to Wisconsin, we're gonna send it to Mo Party after we get it tuned. Hopefully we can have this thing all dialed in for KJ before he hits it at Drag Week. <laughs>